All right, I'd like to work through some example feature functions. Um, probably the simplest uh, feature function we've already seen is the constant feature function. So this is the function that we used in our earlier examples and even in our derivation of the uh, normal equation. We, we looked at the, the, the data matrix x, which is really just d dimensions, or d columns and n rows. And then we added an additional column of ones um, and this becomes an additional feature. So our feature function maps to this now a d plus one or p dimensional matrix. This is our, our feature matrix phi um, that we can then pass to the simple linear definition or simple linear model um, and, and fit these parameters and have the, the uh, offset term. And actually I wanna talk about that briefly. So this, this extra theta zero that we've created by adding this uh, all, all ones vector at the beginning of our, our the all ones column in our, in our matrix, um, it's sometimes referred to as a, a constant feature, an offset, an intercept, or, and in some cases even a bias. In fact, actually pretty often it's called a bias, which is a little bit confusing because later on we're gonna actually use the term bias to talk about something else in the context of modeling. Um, but th this is the, the So I want to talk about, about different kinds of feature functions and some very simple examples. And probably the most uh, basic example of a feature function we've already seen is by adding the, the all one uh, column vector uh, to our original data matrix. So here's our kind of initial covariate matrix, which is an n by d matrix. Uh, and because we wanted to have a constant term in our linear model, we added just an extra ones vector, a, a column vector to that matrix so that when we then uh, create a, a linear model um, the slope of this all ones vector becomes our constant term um, in our linear model. Now, this all ones, uh, the, this slope, uh, this all ones vector, this extra dimension is some kind, sometimes called the, the constant feature, the offset, the intercept. Um, it's also often called the bias, which is a little bit confusing because we're going to use the term bias later to refer to uh, how a model fits or doesn't fit the underlying phenomena. So that's one example of a pretty basic feature function. Now I want to talk about uh, nonlinear data and how we might be able to use feature functions to better fit that kind of data. Suppose we wanted to fit something like this, a wavy surface, something we've illustrated in one of the earlier notebooks. How would we fit something like this with the linear model? The surface doesn't appear linear. This is actually still just a linear model because it's a linear combination of features, our features being 1, x1, x2, and the sine of x1 plus x2. And so you can write these as our, in, or as our separate feature functions, x0 through x3. Now it's important to note in all these feature functions that uh, the, there are no parameters within the feature function itself. So now what I'd like to actually do is walk through a notebook that tries to fit this uh, essentially nonlinear relationship between uh, our, our response variable and in our, in our input dimensions um, using a linear model. So now I wanna walk through the notebook that I built to, to demonstrate some of these feature engineering concepts. Uh, in this part of the video, I'm gonna walk through the first part of the notebook, then we'll switch back to the, the slides to talk about the, how to deal with, with non-numerical data, and we'll walk then to the second part of the notebook in the subsequent video. All right, so in the notebook, I, as I've done previously, I've tried to give a little more textual description of what we're doing in feature engineering. Um, I have a, you know, a link to the, the first part of the video. I wanna just quickly, uh, remind you all that we're working on multiple regression or multilinear regression where we're regressing, uh, we have many features and we're predicting one thing. It was a little bit confusing because something called multivariate regression actually refers to predicting multiple things at once. Um, we are not doing that currently. We're just focusing on predicting one thing like the, the price of a diamond um, as a function of many characteristics of a diamond. All right, and as before, we'll use our standard imports, my NumPy and Pandas, my data visualization tools, um, and we're going to use the scikit-learn linear regression package here, uh, so we'll use that for modeling. Uh, second video, uh, in fact, the one we're recording right now will be here. Uh, you can watch that video, as it, or in fact, you are watching that video right now. Uh, and so after you're done watching the video, you'll be able to walk through the, the, the code below. Um, or if you want, you could try listening and maybe walking th through the code as I go through it uh, at the same time. All right, so what does it mean to be a linear model? Um, again, these are in the, the slides that I presented earlier, but just to recap our, our terms, uh, we're, we're building out these 
uh, linear combination of, of features, and it doesn't have to be the original features. We can have nonlinear transformation on our feature, uh, on our original feature data, as long as we take a linear combination of those nonlinear transformations. Uh, so we can write our feature function as a collection of feature functions, uh, one feature function for each dimension. Um, these would then be individual feature functions that take a, a entire row of data and then produce a single uh, real quantity, a real valued quantity, so a single dimensional feature. All right, so now let's talk about modeling nonlinear relationships. Uh, so in our previous lecture, we actually had a data set um, which had a nonlinear relationship in it. Uh, so I want to load that data set again. Uh, so this is our, our uh, toy uh, data set that I created. Um, you'll notice a, a trend here when I create data sets. I tend to like to use uh, sign functions to make my, my data look interesting. Um, so again, here is the data. Uh, notice here there are two feature dimensions. So in the original data, there's, uh, I should change these axes. So uh, there's the, uh, we'll scroll back up. So we look at our table. There's an x1 and an x2 feature dimension. Um, and uh, there's one response variable y. Um, and so these are plotted here. This is the x1 feature dimension. This is the x2 feature dimension. And then the response variable for each of these points is, is plotted on the, the, the z axis here. Um, and to understand how these plots work, uh, you can look at it. I'm using a scatter 3D where I've set x to x1, y to uh, x2, and z to be the uh, y value, right? Cool, so that's our, our data, uh, and we had previously asked, is this relationship linear? Uh, well, uh, you, you decide. Uh, there is some, it does look like the data lives on some kind of plane, um, but there does appear to be some kind of coherent curvature or other structure that we'd like to fit. Um, in the previous lecture, we used ridge regression. Uh, we used kernel, it's a form of kernel regression, and we're able to actually fit this structure, but um, that, that's actually not gonna be the kind of linear model that we want to build. Uh, so I, instead, I'm going to try to fit this data just using linear models. All right, so first, uh, as a quick recap, um, I'm going to fit a linear regression model to the original x1, x2, just to see where we were. Um, I'm using the same plotting code I used in the previous lecture to generate a picture of the surface that this model predicts. Um, so once I've trained this, or, you know, fit this model to this data, in machine learning we call it train the model, um, so once I've trained or, or fit it, um, I can now use this model to make a prediction for every point um, in space. Let me just show you what that looks like. So I make uh, predictions along a grid. I'm actually only going to look at five points, and that's because it's a plane, so it doesn't really need uh, more points to make a, a good uh, approximation of the surface. So what's happening here is I'm essentially evaluating the model at, at uh, regular uh, intervals um, on, on each of these. Here, I'll scroll down a bit evaluating the model on regular intervals on each of these axes and then getting the, the, the uh, prediction of the model and that becomes a point on this plane and then I'm, I'm drawing a plane connecting all of these points. So that gives me my surface. And we see this is our, our linear model um, and it does pass the data. So it does seem to reflect the, on the major structure of this data, but there is certainly uh, some, some kind of well, sinusoidal structure that we'd like to try to fit. All right. Um, so now let's define a phi function. Uh, this is our feature function. It's going to map our x into a higher dimensional space. So um, this is the phi function here that I've defined. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my, my x data, which is, remember, it's, it's two columns um, in, in n rows. I think it's 1,000 rows. Um, and so I'm going to take the x matrix, and I'm going to attach another feature dimension uh, to the right of it. So this is actually going to add two. So I'm going to take the sign of both columns of this matrix, and so I'll, I'll put the sign, so I'll have x and the sine of x, so I'll now have a matrix which with just these two things is um, four uh, columns. And then if I uh, continue, I can also look at a higher frequency sign, so I'll look at a slightly higher frequency, I'll add two more columns here, uh, even higher frequency still, I'll add two more columns here. Um, I can also do a phase offset, so I take my sign and, and shift it in, you know, in time a little bit. Um, and I do that again at different frequencies. Notice all of these numbers here are not parameters. I'm not gonna try to optimize these. These are decisions I make during the modeling process. So these are effectively hyperparameters of my model. So that's my phi function. Uh, how many dimensions should this be? So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we expect 14 dimensions for our matrix. 
Uh, let's try it. So we'll go ahead and uh, extract our original X matrix by just pulling the two columns X1 and X2 from our synthetic data. And we'll extra extract our Y matrix by pulling just the response column Y from our data. Uh, good, now we can run uh, our phi periodic function on this matrix, to produce on the X matrix to produce the phi matrix. Um, what is the shape of the phi matrix? So phi dot shape. Good. So it's 1,000 by 14. That's what we expected. So we've taken a two-dimensional prediction problem and raised it to a 14-dimensional prediction problem. We're going to fit a plane in 14 dimensions, but that's actually going to correspond uh, to a nonlinear surface in our original two-dimensional space. Uh, so let's take a look at what that, that actually looks like. So again, I'm going to fit a, a linear regression model. So I'll build a linear regression model object. Um, notice I didn't add the ones column. And you might be going, why didn't you add the ones column? Well, that's because the linear regression class um, will automatically do that. So it's got this fit intercept and it's default to true. So it'll automatically go ahead and add the ones column since that's such a standard thing to do. All right, so we can fit our model and that's it. I just fit a model. Uh, I can now make predictions. Now, when I go to make predictions, I have to be a little more careful. Um, I can't just feed in X anymore. I have to transform whatever X I pass in um, by mapping it into this 14 dimensional space. Um, so I, my, my new predict function has an extra step in it that it first takes whatever input it was past x uh, and then maps it to a 14 dimensional space and then asks the model to make a prediction of, from its linear model in that 14 dimensional space. So now that I have this uh, phi predict function, I can pass that in to my uh, visualization code and it's going to get uh, handed a, you know, a regular uh, a grid of, of points in my original two dimensional space and make predictions that will form my surface. And this is what my surface looks like. And so this is the output of a linear model. So I fit a linear model to this data. Uh, this is a clearly nonlinear surface in these two dimensions, uh, in the original two feature dimensions. But in the, the transformed 14 dimensional feature space, this is just a plane in that space. And if we zoom in, there's actually some interesting structure going on here. And if you can kind of see it, there's some extra bumps. Because remember, we have multiple sine functions that are being fit. And so it's trying to fit not just the, these bigger sine curves, sine bumps, but even these, these kind of smaller bumps as well. Uh, so we actually have some pretty interesting structure. You know what? Uh, one thing I didn't do in the previous scikit-learn example is take a look at the model itself. So we can actually look at the model we get um, after running this prediction process. Um, so what did we call this model? We called it uh, model phi. So model phi dot, uh, I believe, underscore. get params. Nope, that's the parameters of the model. It's called uh, weights and intercepts, if I remember correctly. So intercept would be the intercept term. Um, so that's the, the theta zero from before. Uh, and we'll do model phi uh, coef, that's it, sorry. The coefficients are our, our parameters theta. And so we'd expect to see uh, 14 of these. Let's just take a look at the shape of that. Um, indeed, there are 14 coefficients. And these are the coefficients of each of those uh, feature functions. Um, and so we might start to look at these and go, you know, some of these are pretty small. Probably that feature didn't uh, participate maybe as much in the, the prediction, uh, where some of these are bigger. So this was the, the, the uh, x and, uh, x1 and x2 coefficients. These were the sine coefficients. Um, those are a bit larger. And then the remaining features are all pretty small, um, which means they, the, the uh, other features are probably not as, as useful in predicting um, the, the response value. OK, so that's uh, basics of how we can take a model, uh, a linear model, and use it to, to model something that's, that's fairly nonlinear. Uh, by, by transforming our feature space into a higher dimensional space where it is linear in that space, but the uh, underlying, uh, the original space is nonlinear. Um, and the important takeaway here is that with linear models, what we're really saying is that, if we go to our equation up here, that we're really looking for a linear combination of feature functions, not the original features themselves. Or put another way, it really needs to be a linear combination of the parameters of the model. All right, so that's the end of our discussion on fitting nonlinear uh, functions with uh, linear models. We'll now transition to talking about data that may not be in numerical form.